Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're going to do a fun little linked list problem and we're going to try and determine whether a linked list is a palindrome or not. And a palindrome, in case you don't know, is just a list that is the same forwards as it is backwards. So as you can see here, we have two examples. In this case, the list is one, two, three forwards and three, two, one backwards. So those are obviously not the same, but in this case, it's one, two, one and one, two, one. So even when I say it, you can hear they're exactly the same in both directions. So that's what we're going to try and do. And let's just jump right in. We might want to check with our interviewer what the type in our list is going to be, but it's not really going to affect the problem. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm just going to use integers. And now let's think about how we can solve the problem. So something I just said might stand out to you. The list is the same forwards as it is backwards. And so we could just reverse this linked list and then compare the two lists. So that is a, that is a very simple way that we could solve this problem. So let's take an example here, just like this. And now we could copy this list and reverse it. And so what we would simply have to do here is just go through the list one element at a time and we would compare it. So, you know, it's those are equal, these are equal, so on and so forth through the entire list. And that would be one really simple way that we could do this. And that's all well and good. There are reasons that I don't like this approach. And the main reason I don't like this approach is that you have to copy the entire linked list, which seems unnecessary to me. And yes, you technically don't have to copy the whole list because what you could do is take this first list here and you could basically split the list in half and reverse the links on this part of the list so that you would get something like this and then you would basically compare. So since it's a uneven list, we would just, we're just gonna ignore the center and then you would compare these two lists like this. That's a little more complicated. I don't think that it needs to, we need to go for such a, like the code for that is gonna be a little bit more tricky and it's not something I really wanna deal with. So that's an option, but it's not, I don't think the best option. So how else can we do this? So let's just go back to, our list that we had before. So we could actually go and we could store the values that we visited thus far into some sort of data structure where we can then compare them once we get to the second half. And I keep mentioning this and hopefully this is obvious, but because of the way that we're comparing these, the first, for them to be even, the first half of the list always has to be equal to the second half. So we only have to actually compare half the list. So in that first example where we reverse the linked list, we would only have to compare the first half of the nodes because the second half is by definition going to be the same in like the, if the first halves are equal, then the second halves are gonna be equal no matter what. So in this case, we could use this one linked list and we could actually just compare the, we could save what we visit when we go through the first half of the list here, and then compare those back when we get to, when we go through the second half of the list. And that's what I think I'm gonna do. And as may be obvious at this point, we wanna store this value and then this value, and then when we get to here, we wanna get this value back and then this value back. So a last in, first out, or a data structure or a stack would be perfect for this because we can just push items onto the stack. We can push the one onto the stack, then the two onto the stack. And then when we get to here, we pop the two and we pop the one. So hopefully that makes sense. We just want to think about how exactly we're going to do this because it's going to maybe get a little bit tricky when we have an odd number versus an even number of elements in our list. We have to, if they're an odd number, we want to ignore the middle element in the list. So this is also very similar to a problem that we did a while back that was like getting the kth element of a linked list or getting the center of a linked list. So we are going to start with two pointers and we're going to have a current pointer which is going to point to our current node and a runner pointer that's going to go ahead and the runner pointer is going to move two steps for every uh, every one step that the current pointer moves and that way once the the runner pointer is either at the last node or past the last node, we're going to know that the other pointer is at the middle of the list. So let's just look 
this will help. We're just gonna visualize this really quickly so that it'll be easier for us to actually implement it properly in the code. And you have to be really careful. We don't wanna get, it's really easy to get one-off errors in this. So we wanna make sure that we're thinking about it. And it would be great to like draw this on the whiteboard or something like that. So we're gonna increment, this is gonna be our current pointer. We increment it by one. And then our runner pointer, we increment by two, which is fine. And now, we increment the current pointer by one and we increment the runner pointer by two. And now the current pointer is pointing at the middle node in the list. And we don't wanna do anything with this node. We don't want it to add it to our stack and we don't want to compare it to anything. So it's really just we're like dumping this node. And we know that this is at the middle of the list because our other pointer is at the last node in the list. Our runner is at the last node in the list. So we can use that to our advantage and say that when our runner pointer dot next is equal to null, so when our runner pointer is at the very end, then our current pointer is at the middle and we have an odd length list. Because we're going to see that, let's now do the example where our list is even length. So we're gonna go back to the beginning, just like this. We're gonna increment by one, increment this one by two, then do the same thing again. Increment this by one, increment this by two. And finally, we're gonna increment this by one and we're gonna increment this by two. And now we're at past the end, so the pointer points to null. And then we know that we're at, we're now starting on the second half of the list if it's even. So we're gonna compare these two together. We're going to pop this off the stack and compare it to this. And then we're gonna just continue on with this pointer through the rest of the list. So hopefully that all makes sense. We're gonna go ahead, let's go ahead and actually implement this. So as always, we need a private node class. So I'm just gonna do a private int value and private int private node next and that's all there is to that and then we're going to have our public method which is going to return a boolean right because we're just saying is it a palindrome or not so boolean and I'll call it palindrome and it's going to take in a list or a node at so the first thing we do need to do is add all the items to the list and get our current pointer to the center of the list. And this is where we just went over basically how we're going to do that. So we're going to create, we're going to implement, we're going to instantiate two nodes. We're going to have our node current, which is going to be equal to n. And we're also going to have a node runner, which is also going to be equal to n, right? Because we're starting them both at the first node in the list. And then we also need to create a stack. So I'm gonna just create a stack of integers. If you wanted to, in theory, you could create a stack of nodes, but there's not any real reason to do that. So I'm just gonna create a stack of integers, which I'm gonna call stack, and that's gonna be a new stack. Just like that. So now I'm going to go, I'm gonna create a while loop. And so if you remember, when we were here, we basically got to, the state where our pointer was here, where one pointer was here, and the other pointer was off the end of the list. So let me actually add a pointer like this. So this was our one case, and our other case we ended up in a slightly different state. So we ended up with the pointer here and the pointer here like this. So we want to make sure that we're checking for these cases when we're doing this. So I'm going to create a while loop because I just want to keep going through the list until I get to one of these states basically. Or really until I get to this state, this node is actually going to be, well let's not worry about that, we'll get to this. So I'm going to say while, so our one case is n dot our runner dot next is equal to null and our other case here is if runner equals null so we're going to stop if one of those cases is true so if runner equals null or well actually we'll do the reverse of this so if runner is not equal to null and runner dot next is not equal to null then we're going to just keep going 
So, and the one thing I'll point out here that you should definitely keep in mind is when you're doing things like this, you always want to put runner is not equal to null before you put runner.next is not equal to null. And the reason for that is that if you put runner.next is equal to null before runner is equal to null, if runner is null, then that will give you an error because it'll try and access a field on a variable that is set to null. So make sure that you do it in that order and while that's the case we're going to push onto our stack and then we're going to increment both the pointers right so we're going to say stack dot push we're going to push our current dot value and then we're going to say cur is equal to cur dot next and runner is equal to next runner dot next dot next runner.next.next .next. and we know obviously that runner.next is not equal to null so this value of runner may be equal to null but at least we're not going to that's not going to cause any errors which we want to make sure that we're careful about that so and I'm just going to delete this so that you don't run out of space so now what we now we're at this state here we're at one of these two states right so what do we want to do in both states so in this state we don't need, we just want to start popping off the stack but in this state, we actually want to skip the current node ahead by one because we want to ignore the center node. So we're just going to say, and the way that we know that we're in this state is that the runner is not equal to null, but runner.next is equal to null. So we'll just go ahead and say if runner is not equal to null, and we know that either runner is not e either runner is equal to null or runner.next is equal to null. So in this case, just if runner is not equal to null, then we're just going to increment cur and say that cur equals cur.next. And that way we're going to go ahead and we're going to skip this. And so now we're in the one of these two states and that's where we want to be. So we're just going to go through to the end of the list. We're going to say while cur is not equal to null, and we're going to go through and we're going to compare we're going to pop items off the stack and we're going to compare them to the current and then we're going to increment the current right so we're going to say if stack dot pop and we need to do dot int value because in java we're storing integer objects not integer primitives so you know the little pain in the ass sort of things you have to do in java but that's okay and if you were to forget that in your interview it almost certainly would not be a problem, but we're going to compare that to cur.value. And if those are not equal, then we want to return false, right? Because if they're not equal, then that means that it's not a palindrome. So return false. And then otherwise, we're going to say cur equals cur.next. And finally, if we got through the whole thing and they were all equal to each other, we know that it is a palindrome, so we're just going to return true. And that's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and go through these two examples that we have and test and make sure that this actually works the way that we expect it to. And I'm actually going to shorten these examples a little bit so we don't have to spend so much time. So we have one that's an even length and we're going to have one that's an odd length like this. So let's go through the even length example first. And I'll just, eh, that's useful to have. Uh, so we're going to call palindrome on this node here. So current equals that current equals node n and runner equals node n and we create a new empty stack. So let's just put our stack here. So stack and I'll put the values on to the stack. So first we're going to say well so runner is not equal to null and runner.next is not equal to null. So we're going to say stack.push current value. So current value is 1 and then we're going to say current equals current.next and runner equals runner.next.next. .next. So we're going to come to here. And now we're going to say, we're going to go back. Runner is not equal to null and runner.next is not equal to null. So we're going to push our next value. So that's going to be two. So then we're going to say current equals current.next. Uh, runner equals runner.next.next, dot .next, so we're here now, and now runner is equal to null. So we're going to come down here, and runner is equal to null, so we're going to skip down to here. And now we're going to say while current is not equal to null, so current is this one here at 2. So we're going to say 
stack.pop.value and current is we're going to compare that to current value. So we're going to say we're going to pop this, which is two, and we're going to compare it to the current value. And they are equal, so we're going to continue to our next one. And we're going to say current equals current.next. So we're going to do this again. We're going to say stack.pop in value. That's going to be one. And current value is one, so they're equal. And the stack is now empty. And then we're going to increment current.next. And finally, current.next is equal to null, so we're going to come down and return true. So that was exactly what we expected, and that's good. And now let's just come down here and we'll look at our second example. So we're going to say that we create our current node is n and our runner is n and a new stack. And then we're going to say runner is not equal to null and runner.next is not equal to null. So we're going to push our current value. We're going to push 1 and then current equals current.next and runner equals runner.next.next. .next. So now we're going to come to here and runner is not equal to null, but runner.next is equal to null. So we're going to break out and we're going to come down here and we're going to say runner is not equal to null. So current equals current.next because runner is this value. So it's not null. So we're going to increment current by one. And then all that's left is current is not equal to null. So we're going to pop this one off the stack and compare the values and they're equivalent. So we're going to say current equals current.next and now current equals null and we're going to return true. So that's all there is to it. Uh, hopefully that solution made sense and let me know if you have any questions down in the comments or on the blog and I will see you guys again soon.